All right, so this is the last lesson in all of Unit 1 um, and the last part of Chapter 9 that we cover. And the, uh, the key to this lesson is being able to visualize a few important characteristics about a rational function by looking at just the equation, and really it's factors especially. And so I start off with this, uh, in which let's say we have a rational function where we can see the factors like this. And notice we have a factor of x plus a that's both in the numerator and the denominator. It's a factor of x plus b and x plus c that are, you know, one's in the numerator, one's in the denominator, but they're not both there. And the idea here for all of these is that a, b, and c are not the same number, otherwise it's the same factor. And on that, they can be any real number. OK, so we have a vertical asymptote uh, anywhere x equals negative c. Um, anywhere we are essentially dividing by 0. So right there, notice if I have, if x is negative c, if x is the opposite of c, then that factor will become 0. My whole denominator will become 0. And that's when we have a vertical asymptote. And so at vertical asymptotes are when, in this scenario, we have x equals minus c. But what about the a? Well, notice because we have a factor of a in the numerator and the denominator, those factors cancel out. So x still can't equal negative a, but it's on an asymptote, and that's when we have a point of discontinuity. So we have a point of discontinuity when x equals negative a. So whether x is negative a or whether x is negative c, uh, we still have a discontinuity. Our graph has a break in it, but a vertical asymptote and a point of discontinuity are very, very different looking things. Um, and as well, x-intercepts are whenever our numerator equals 0. And so that's our numerator is going to equal 0 anytime x equals negative b. And that's it. Notice if x equals negative a, um, that won't be an x-intercept because it cancels out from the denominator. And that'll actually be a point of discontinuity there. All right. So as always, much better than just looking at that is to try using it. And so for each of these four, I believe, uh, functions, I want to state uh, where there's a vertical asymptote, if any, where there's a point of discontinuity, if any. Okay, And if they don't have any, then the domain is all real numbers. And I want to find a way of being clear about that. So for all of these, the key is the first factor. So looking at function a, I'm going to factor my numerator. And I get x minus 3 times x plus 2 over x minus 1. OK, so nothing cancels out, which means my expression doesn't simplify. Uh, which means when x is equal to 1, I'm dividing by 0, and it doesn't simplify down to something else. It's just when x, as the closer the x gets to 1, the closer I'm dividing by 0, and my outputs will get really large or really negative, and that's going to lead to a vertical asymptote. So there is a vertical asymptote when x equals 1. Um, and that's all I'm looking for. I'm not looking for a lot of detail here. So for b, I have a different numerator. So let's factor this. And my two factors are x minus 3 and x minus 1. This time, a factor of x minus 1 cancels out from both the numerator and the denominator, if I'm choosing to simplify it. So that expression I started with can be simplified to just x minus 3, which is a line. So I now know that function b looks like a line. but x still can't equal 1. Again, if you look back at my original expression, um, or equation, I should say, if x equals 1, I'm dividing by 0. And I don't really care what's in the numerator. Division by 0 doesn't make sense. And so hence, even though that factor cancels out, even though I now know function b looks like a line, I know it also can't, uh, I can't input 1 into the equation, which means I know this must be a point of discontinuity. It looks like a line. Lines don't have vertical asymptotes. And so I know there's a point of discontinuity at. Now, I could say when x equals 1, and that's not wrong. However, a point of discontinuity also has a y coordinate. It's a point. It's not a vertical asymptote. So it's 1 comma what? And so how can I figure that out? Well, to figure that out, I just need to take my, uh, my point of discontinuity, my 1, and put it back into my simplified e 
expression. If I put it back into the original equation, I'm going to get 0 divided by 0, which again doesn't equal anything. Um, if I put it back into my simplified expression right here, I get 1 take away 3 is negative 2. And so I know the point of discontinuity is at 1 comma negative 2. And sometimes for the point of discontinuity, I quite often I just care about the x coordinate. But it is a point, and points have a vertical coordinate as well. And again, it's pretty easy to find. Just put your x value for your point of discontinuity into the, your simplified expression. In this case, a linear function. Let's look at c. OK, again, let's factor. Same numerator as before, so same factors as before. My denominator, though, doesn't factor. x squared plus 1, I can't factor. It's not the same as x plus 1 times x plus 1. Uh, it doesn't factor. So I know there's no point of discontinuity. Nope. Uh, if there was a point of discontinuity, something would cancel out. However, there's also no vertical asymptote either. And that's because my denominator will never equal 0. Um, and I'll make a little note here. x squared plus 1 is never going to equal 0. And why is that? Because if, if I subtract 1 from both sides, that would mean x squared would have to equal negative 1. And again, that's not possible if we're dealing with real numbers. And so I will never divide by 0, which means I will never have any type of discontinuity. Right? We only have discontinuities when at some point we divide by 0. Well, I'm never going to divide by 0. I don't care what x is. My denominator will always be non-zero, which means x can be any real number, which means this particular function has no discontinuities. Oh, the word discontinuity has so many vowels. Discontinue. <laughs> Let me try that again. Darn this word. Discontinue. <laughs> Take three. Maybe I should talk while I'm doing it. Whew. It's an annoying word to spell out. Look at all those vowels. Anyways, uh, let's look at D. OK, again, same numerator. So same factors as the last few. My denominator, though, is a difference of squares. So it definitely factors. It's x minus 1 times x plus 1. So I see I can simplify this by canceling out that factor. So this cancels out and simplifies down to x minus 3 over x plus 1. However, um, x still can't equal 1, right? And from that factor I canceled out, because I can't see that anymore if I look at my simplified expression here. Let me just make that a little bit neater. And so what do I have here? Well, I have both a vertical asymptote and a point of discontinuity. So one thing I have is a point of discontinuity uh, at x equals 1. Uh, and the actual coordinates will be 1 comma negative 1. Again, if you literally just take that 1 and put it into my simplified expression, you will get it simplifies down to negative 1. So there's a point of discontinuity. There's also a vertical asymptote. And the vertical asymptote, I can see right here when x equals negative 1. So again, vertical asymptotes and point to discontinuity both come from when you divide by 0. But a point to discontinuity, we can notice when, you when there's some sort of common factor in the numerator and the denominator that cancels out. And you don't actually see it in your simplified expression, except for the restriction. A vertical asymptote is when you divide by 0 and nothing cancels out. Um, and that's what's kind of summarized in the beginning of these notes. OK, so that's the main part. I have one sort of applied question here. That's actually pretty tricky, but I have a graph here to kind of help us out. Um, the graph you see here, this weird rational function red, is something from physics. And it's showing us the maximum altitude. So A represents the maximum altitude in kilometers um, of an object when you launch it vertically with an initial velocity of V kilometers per second. So v represents the initial velocity of something like fired up. Um, imagine like a cannon firing something straight up. And v is the initial velocity in kilometers per second, kind of an unusual rate there, a very, you know, very fast rate if you, for, if you look at your number. 
and A is the maximum altitude it gets to before it comes back down, right? Fire something up, comes back down, and so that maximum height from here to here is the A. Okay, and this is a, the formula for it. All I want is the domain of this function. Okay, domain has to do with the input, the velocity in this case. And I have a graph here. So one thing I can do by looking at the graph is realize that I can see there's vertical asymptotes. There's a vertical asymptote right here and right here roughly. So where are those vertical asymptotes? I can tell where they are by looking at my denominator um, and figuring out anywhere 125 minus v squared equals zero, which means anywhere 125 equals v squared, which is where v squared equals root 125. So those are my asymptotes. One asymptote is right here at minus root 125, and one's at positive root 125. All right, so that's what those asymptotes are, just by analyzing the equation. However, this is an applied question, and v is velocity of firing something straight up. And so I know this function only makes sense when v is a positive number. So for example, everything over here is meaningless. According to this graph, um, you know, if I fire something directly into the ground, negative 10 kilometers per second. So think about how quick that is. Every second, this object moves 10 kilometers. I fire directly into the ground, and it will reach a height of, I don't know, 2,000 something uh, kilometers. That makes no sense at all, right? This function is utterly meaningless when x is negative. And so the domain so far, I know only is when x is positive, OK? So so far, I know the domain must be where velocity is greater than or equal to 0, OK? Uh, mathematically, I can put a whole bunch of other numbers into velocity, but for what this is actually talking about, it's meaningless. However, there's one other part I have to get rid of, and that's this region right here. This also makes no sense. According to this, if I fire something straight up with a speed of 14 kilometers per second, OK, extremely quick. I fire something straight up from like a cannon with a speed of 14 kilometers per second. And the highest point it'll get to before it comes back down is about negative, what is that? It's 100,000, negative 20,000 kilometers. What the hell does that mean? OK, uh, that makes no sense again. And so all of this as well doesn't make any sense. All that m actually applies to this particular function, this function only has a domain between 0 and up to that asymptote, which is root 125. So the domain of this function is actually everything from 0. And 0 makes sense. If the initial speed is 0, the maximum height it gets to is 0. Um, but up to a maximum, but not including root 125. And that's the domain, which I figured out by thinking about, well, by analyzing the equation to find the, as the asymptotes, by also then thinking about the context uh, of the graph with the question. And in the end, that's the domain. So this equation only means something if you're dealing with uh, velocities between 0 and root 125. After root 125, this equation is meaningless in terms of what it's trying to show. However, I would like to make one last comment about this. What's special about root 125? Well, at that point, that's the point when the object is fired so quick that it never comes back down. Remember, if something is fired fast enough, it doesn't actually have to come back down to Earth. It just keeps going off into space if it escapes Earth gravity. And so that number there, without turning this into a physics lesson, but when velocity is greater or equal to 125 kilo, root 125 kilometers per second, um, an object will escape Earth's gravity. and not return. Hence, uh, my uh, function breaks down after that because uh, you know, uh, if it doesn't return, then there is no maximum altitude, according to this model. OK, so in the end, a tricky question. And when I would give this in class, it would take quite a while to figure everything out. Everything out. The graph of it definitely helps me quickly sort of visualize the parts that don't make sense. OK, that's it. Last question. I have the graph of this weird rational function. It looks like a line, but there's two points of discontinuity. I want to know the equation, but I want it in the specific form of one polynomial divided by another um, in a sort of standard rational form. 
So how can I figure this out? The first thing I would do is figure is ignore the points of discontinuity for a moment, ignore those, and figure out the equation of the line. If I ignore those, the equation of the line, slope intercept form, uh, would be this has a slope of two, sorry, take that back, has a slope of one half. So it's one half x take away one. So that's the equation of the line. Remember any linear function, you can find the equation of it if you know the y-intercept, which is negative two, and you know the slope. Right from there, they're up one over two. The basics are always so important. So that's the equation of the line. Well, how do I make a rational function that looks like this but has these two points of discontinuity? There's several ways. First thing I want to do, though, is I want to write this in a more sort of st standard rational form, which means I want one fraction, which I can do quite easily if I first write it as x over 2 take away 2, and then find a common denominator. So right now, that's a 1. And so to find a common denominator, I need to change that to 2 and change that to 4. So I have x minus 4 over 2. So what I have right here is the is still no different than what I had at the beginning in terms of what it means. It's a line. It's just in sort of a less, it's not in slope intercept form anymore. Now though, if I have it like this, if I want to create these points of discontinuity, for example, the one that I have that's highlighted in yellow, that point in yellow is when x equals negative 1, which means if I create a factor of x plus 1 in the numerator and the denominator, I know there'll be a point of discontinuity there. And if I do the same thing for the other point in green, that's when x is 4. If I create a factor of x minus 4 in the numerator and the denominator, I know I'll have a point of discontinuity at 4. And yet, it will still, other than that, behave just like a line. And so, uh, to write this a little bit neater, I'll say, therefore, uh, my equation would be x minus 4 squared, because there's two of them in the numerator, over x plus 1 over 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 4. Again, I could put it, I could now expand and simplify these things, but please don't. Um, and I'm all done. Um, not only done this lesson, but done this unit. So the next time I give you a video, it will be on trigonometry. Ooh, good times.